DCT 2150U, Digital Technologies and Advanced Teaching Methods. The title for this particular video clip is Massive Online Open Courses, or MOOCs. Networks exist everywhere, but if you're unable to connect yourself, networks will not do much for you, and even if you can see them. The analysis questions for this particular video clip are as follows. What is a MOOC? How do MOOCs work? Why would someone enroll in a MOOC? Although the term MOOC is only about five years old, the concept behind MOOCs comes from a 50-year-old idea. In 1962, Douglas Engelbart from the Stanford Research Institute had the idea of using computers to collaborate. He thought that if each person had a personal computer, they could be connected together and this would increase the human intellect by working together and sharing massive amounts of information. According to Wikipedia, a massive open online course or a MOOC is a course where the participants are distributed and course material are also dispersed across the web. This is possible only if the course is open and works significantly better if the course is large. The course is not gather a gathering, but rather a way of connecting distributed instructors and learners across a common topic or field of course. MOOCs are a more recent form of online course development, departing from formats that rely on posted resources, learning management systems, and structures that mix the LMS with more open web resources. You can have access to this information by going on Wikipedia and making a search for massive open online course. MOOCs are related to many ideas you encountered so far in this course. First, indeed, MOOCs are founded on connectivism because they require networked learning. MOOCs are usually possible in an open learning institution because they require an open learning structure. It is usually free to participate in a MOOC, but if you participate in a MOOC offered by a university that provides some type of credential, you will be charged tuition. A MOOC is usually related to a timeline for the completion of the work and follows weekly topics of discussion, and many resources are offered throughout various technologies. There is a lot of flexibility as the content emerges from the input of the participants who are sharing their own resources posting discussions, contributing ideas, and etc. through weekly discussions. Up to the present day, there are two broad categories of MOOCs, CMOOCs and XMOOCs. CMOOCs are MOOCs that are designed in a connectivist pedagogy, such as those designed by people like Stephen Downs, Jim Groom, Dave Cormier, Alan Levine, Wendy Drexler, Inge DeWard, Ray Schroeder, David Wiley, and Alec Kurovs. These MOOCs are designed in an open learning connectivist perspective, which means that learners are encouraged to be creative, autonomous, and well-networked. X MOOCs, as Siemens call them, and you can have access to uh, the article in uh, the eLearn Space platform. X MOOCs are well-financed MOOCs and are not always designed with the same kind of pedagogy as CMOOCs. There is much controversy with XMOOCs because these often consist of video presentations and quizzes that emphasize not knowledge creation, but knowledge replication. However, XMOOCs allow people from various parts of the world to have access to an education in a top university, which is not a bad idea after all. For example, in the fall of 2011, 160,000 students signed up for a free course in, on artificial intelligence offered by Stanford University. This was a breakthrough for distance and online education. MOOC principles. Here are some principles that a designer or teacher needs to keep in mind to design a MOOC. Aggregation, remixing, repurposing, and sharing. This is a different variation of what Harold Jurcher uh, calls aggregate, filter, and connect. The four principles we discuss here come from an idea 
that Stephen Downs has been blogging about. The first principle is aggregation. The fundamental idea of a MOOC is to provide a starting point for a massive amount of content for students dispersed everywhere online, which is later aggregated as a newsletter or a web page accessible to participants on a regular basis. Note that this is different than traditional courses in which the content is prepared ahead of time. The second principle is remixing. Remixing means that MOOC participants will associate material created in the course with other participants and with material that reside elsewhere online. Note that this is different than traditional courses because the learners are expected to contribute to the construction of the course knowledge. The third principle is the repurposing of aggregated and remixed material to suit the needs and objectives of each learner. Note that this is different than the traditional courses because the learner needs to know what he or she will do in the course, then the content is adapted to his or her needs. The fourth principle is sharing or feeding forward. This means that at one point, the content generated throughout the course needs to be distributed to the rest of the world and learners need to be able to access that content after the course. Note that this is different than traditional courses because after the course, the learner generally does not have access to the course content except for his or her course notes. Many researchers wrote about the pedagogy that underlies MOOCs. Here are a few principles that designers and teachers should keep in mind about MOOCs. Learning is not limited to memorizing. It is the process of realizing that others might have a different understanding of facts than we do and differing opinions are valuable. It is the process of connecting information, people and processes. Systems can learn. The potential of knowing more is more important than knowing what we already know. In order to learn, we must be able to see where connections exist and connect ourselves with various people and objects of information. Learning means understanding that the knowledge we have today will change tomorrow. Learning is also about making decisions, choosing what to read, who to work with, what to do, how to accomplish a task, how to solve a problem, being able to make modifications as information changes. Here are a few links uh, to popular MOOCs. There is MOOC.ca, also ChangeMOOC.ca, and there's also MobiMOOC.ca. So you can have a look at these links and see how hectic these courses can be, but also how rich in information they can be. Again, I posted the links to these uh, courses in our course outline. The synthesis questions for this video clip are the following. As a designer or a teacher, how would you design a MOOC? In your opinion, what are the advantages and the challenges of teaching and learning in a MOOC? And finally, imagine yourself as a learner in a MOOC. What would your experience be like?